Hi, my name is Hector Garcia, and I want to show you how to import invoices into QuickBooks from a spreadsheet. Uh, obviously, a spreadsheet like Excel or Google Sheets or maybe any other spreadsheet type of software that you may have is going to work with this. So uh, pretty much how to import invoices into QuickBooks from Excel. Now, there are several scenarios here. Um, you may be importing multiple invoices that have uh, single line items. That's going to be one scenario which we'll show you. Or maybe you're, you're uh, importing a single invoice that has multiple line items or maybe multiple invoices that contain a mixture between multiple line items and single line items. The most important thing is the f this first option here, uh, multiple line items, sorry, multiple invoices with single line items. This first option here can be used with an internal tool called Batch Enter. So we're going to start with this one first. So we're going to start by talking about the Batch Enter uh, Transactions Utility. Now, this is only available in a QuickBooks Accountant or QuickBooks Enterprise. So if you're working with QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, QuickBooks Online, none of this stuff is going to work. What I'm about to show you only works with QuickBooks Accountant or QuickBooks Enterprise. Uh, um, later on, I'll discuss uh, what if you have QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, or if you have QuickBooks Online, I'll discuss those options because uh, you're going to need third-party tools for that. But with the built-in tool, we're going to be able to do uh, multiple invoices with a single line item. So let me show you that. So as I mentioned, if you're working with uh, QuickBooks uh, Desktop Edition, um, either Accountant Edition or Enterprise, and the way you know is up here in the top um, menu bar, it would say QuickBooks Accountant or QuickBooks Enterprise. That's how you know. If you're not 100% sure, if you can't see it up there, just hit Control-1 in your keyboard. Uh, and Control-1 in your keyboard uh, will give you up here where it says product. It will say QuickBooks. And then after it, it will say Pro, Premier, Accountant, Enterprise. Again, if you're working with Accountant or Enterprise only, uh, versions 2014 and above, this is going to work. So we're going to click on the Accountant menu and then click on Batch Enter Transactions. If you're working with Enterprise, it may be under the Company menu somewhere down here but in my edition, it's under Accountant menu. So I'm going to click on Batch Enter Transactions. And let's make sure that we understand this concept. The Batch Enter allows me to copy and paste data from uh, Excel spreadsheets into uh, five specific transaction types. It can either be checks, deposits, credit cards, bills, or invoices. So we're going to go ahead and select Invoices here. And then the setup of the spreadsheet inside QuickBooks needs to match my spreadsheet uh, where I have my invoice data. So let me switch over to my spreadsheet here and show you. So this is a good example here. This is a spreadsheet that contains multiple invoices with single line items. Now, what do I mean by single line items? It means that every single line item represents a different invoice. Multiple line items would be like this. Uh, like I have three line items all going to the same invoice, hitting different individual uh, products or services that I'm selling. So if I need to import multiple line items, this is not going to work. We have to use a third party tool for that. That comes later on in the video. But for the people that need to import single line items or don't need any line, line items, just need to bring uh, the total amount of the invoice. This is actually perfect. Okay. So I got, I got four lines here, each representing a different invoice number. And we also got to take a look at the configuration of these uh, spreadsheet. So we got the, uh, the transaction number first, then we got date, then we got the customer name, then we have the terms, then we have the item, then we have description, then we have quantity, then we have rate, and then we have total. So we're going to make sure that our QuickBooks importable spreadsheet on batch enter, which is this guy right here, needs to look the same. So again, let's just double check. We have number, date, name, terms. Let's start with that. I'm going to click on the customize button here on the top right. And then I'm going to make sure that number is my first one. So I'm going to move that one up. And the next one was date. And then the third one was name. Customer job is name. So I think we're good to go with that. So we got date, number, date, name. Then we're going to do terms, item, and description. So let's look for terms over here. There's terms. And then we have items. So let me move this one up. One, two. And then we have description afterwards. And then we'll go back into that spreadsheet here. And then we got quantity, rate, and total. Perfect. So now we have to make sure that we move up quantity. And then rate. Oops, there's rate. 
quantity and then there's the total. Okay, and at the end we have amount. I think this will work. Let's just double check that this is gonna work. So we got all these names, match our spreadsheet. We're gonna hit okay. So now we're gonna see sort of the QuickBooks batch enter spreadsheet look very similar to a QuickBooks spreadsheet. We're gonna go ahead and copy that information, just the cells that contain the data that I need. So if you got cells without any data that you don't need, go ahead and delete them or move them towards the end because we can't copy and paste any any extra information in there. So you have to make sure that you, you study up on, on the columns that are available and these are the only amount of columns that you're gonna be importing. So only keep in mind, going to the batch enter tool, click on invoices, credit memos, click on customized columns, take a look at your options, right? Because beyond that, you're not gonna be able to import any additional data. So just keep that in mind. Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into our spreadsheet, copy that, and then go back into QuickBooks, and then we're gonna go ahead and paste. And what you will notice is, uh, it's gonna go ahead and paste all the individual information. Anything in red means information that it didn't accept. So that, I'm gonna show you a couple of scenarios why it didn't accept it. For example, customer A didn't accept it. I'm just gonna click on it and then click back out because customer A is not in my customer list. Let me hit on cancel, show you what I mean by that. So if I go into my customer center, my customer A is not here. So QuickBooks is gonna warn me to say, hey, wait a second. I can't import this one if the customer doesn't exist. So make sure that if the customer is supposed to exist, that this is spelled correctly. If not, you're gonna to have to go in there and create each customer. So we can do it from here. We can just select customer A, hit the down arrow, and then I'll say, would you like me to quick add? Then I'll press enter, and I'll hit the down arrow again. So it accepted customer A, because that, that was already on, on my database. I'm gonna hit the down arrow again, and then hit quick add and then down arrow again, and then quick add. So I can actually use the, the, the workflow for this work. And I look at terms. So if I look at my actual terms, see what I had available was net 30. See, it's not going to guess because it says 30 days here that is net 30 here. So you have two choices. One, I can create my terms for net 30. So I can go to add new and call this one called uh, 30 days. And I can configure this one to work that way, so that's one of the options I have. I can hit okay, and I'll just accept them. Or the other thing I could have done is make sure my spreadsheet had the correct information. So this one should have had, you know, maybe net 30, which is actually the correct um, terminology that I originally had in QuickBooks. Maybe I should have fixed my spreadsheet before, and then I could just basically just copy and paste just one column if I wanted to. That's actually kind of a real neat thing. You can actually just copy and paste one column at a time, even, even if you wanted to. And then at the very end, the rate didn't work um, because QuickBooks will not accept uh, dollar signs. <laughs> so you see these dollar signs here, it won't accept them. Uh, so you have to make sure that you remove the dollar signs from there by just keep clicking here on number. So just make Excel do regular numbers and then we can just copy and paste. And this is smart enough to just copy and paste the columns that you're actually using. So I only need to copy and paste uh, the rate and the amount. See, that total, actually, I, I don't get to change or modify. So I'm gonna customize this and move amount to the top. That way I have rate and amount that these are modifiable. And the total is just a mathematical equation for it to double check that it's correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that. Perfect, and you see that total just double checks that your total is correct. So now that I have all that information in there, I'm gonna make sure that I select the correct accounts receivable account in the event that I have multiple accounts receivable accounts in QuickBooks and some clients do that. So I'm not gonna get into why they do that or not, but that's pretty much in a nutshell. And then I'll click on save transactions and click yes. Perfect. Then I'll just to show you, I'm gonna pull a report real quick of, um, of invoices that I did in July of 2016. So let me do 0701-2016 and then up to 07, 31, 2016. And then notice we have $206 worth of revenue. Go ahead and double click that. And then I got my four invoices that I imported and I can double click on any one of them. And you can see that the import, the invoice was imported. There's my customer name. There's the invoice, there's the date. There's my quantity, there's my item code, there's my parts and the total. So what I meant by a single line items means I don't need to have multiple line items in here. Again that batch enter tool, so under accountant batch enter, this batch enter tool only allows you to import invoices that have single line items. Now you could 
uh, go to split here and enter multiple line items per invoice if I wanted to. But unfortunately, uh, the copy and paste capability doesn't work in here. So if I wanted to basically copy and paste these, this information into this split tool here in the bottom, it just doesn't work. Okay, so it's just a, 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 a limitation that it has right now. You can only use batch enter to copy and paste transactions with single line items. Now, what if I have a QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premier? So I don't have QuickBooks Accountant, I don't have QuickBooks Enterprise, and I don't want to upgrade. Uh, then what you need to do is you need to use a third-party tool called Z-Axis or Transaction Pro Importer. Actually, there are two tools out there in the market. They're extremely similar. I'm going to show you Z-Axis because that's the one that I use. It actually works really, really well. Um, you can actually import single line items uh, and multiple line items into QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premier. And this will also work the same exact way if you happen to have QuickBooks Online or if you happen to have QuickBooks Accountant or Enterprise, but you need to do multiple line items. Again, so if I'm working with QuickBooks Pro, Premier or Online and I want to do single line items, I must use a third party tool. And if I want to do multiple line items in any edition, I have to use a third party tool no matter what. So let's talk about what multiple line items mean. So notice that on this spreadsheet, I have two invoice numbers in total. I have the first three lines taking invoice number 1006 and the second, the last two lines, invoice number 1007. So basically one invoice is gonna have three line items in it with three different quantities, three different values, three different items, three different descriptions, right? Um, so the most important thing is if I am going to import multiple line items, the invoice numbers need to match, the dates need to match, and the customer name needs to match across all the line items that go into the same transaction. That's the only way that the importing software will know to put them all into one single transaction. So I'm using a program called Z-Axis. This is what it looks like. So I wanna go ahead and connect to my QuickBooks desktop. And again, if I have QuickBooks Pro, Premier, Enterprise, or online, this will all work. And, um, and because I have to do multiple line items, even if I have QuickBooks Enterprise or Accountant, I would have to use this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept the sync uh, question that is asking me. It's just asking me whether or not I'm allowing it to connect. So now that you see that the company is connected, that means that set access is now uh, available to import the data. So I'm gonna click on the import tab here. And then here's when I, it's gonna ask me, okay, which is the spreadsheet that you're gonna use to import? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on browse. And then I'm going to look for the spreadsheet somewhere in my computer. I think I put it here in my desktop and hit open. And again, this set access tool is a third party tool, it's an add-on. You can't, uh, this is not built into QuickBooks. You have to pay for it extra, okay? Um, and again, we're doing this because we're either importing to Pro, Premiere, uh, or online because it doesn't have the batch enter feature that I spoke about earlier, or because I need to do multiple line items. So again, if it's just single line items, that's gonna be easy. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the example with multiple line items. So I'm gonna click here, multiple line items, which happens to be the spreadsheet. Let me just double check here happens to be this spreadsheet here called multiple line items. That's exactly what I called it. Um, so we know exactly in context what is it that we're importing. So you will notice down here on this general area here, we're gonna see a preview of the data that's about to be imported. But now uh, set access or transaction pro importer, whatever software you're using to import, it's not gonna know what these uh, pieces of data mean. You, you actually have to do the mapping, you have to map it. So mapping is done here. Um, here where it says choose mapping, I'm gonna go ahead and click add new mapping. And this is uh, when you add the mapping, this is where you tell it, okay, this is actually going to be an invoice map. And notice that we can actually import all sorts of transactions with set access. So it's actually a pretty cool tool. I'm gonna click here invoice, and then I'm gonna give this a mapping name. So I'll, write, I'll just call it invoice import. I give it whatever name I want. So that's gonna ask me a bunch of questions and this is kind of in code. Uh, so there will be a little bit of sort of uh, practice that you're gonna have to take. If you actually go to Google and you type in the search box, if you type Z-axis invoice import, it's gonna take you to, the, to like a cheat sheet where it's actually gonna tell you what ev every one of those things mean. So I'm gonna type here Z-axis invoice import. 
it will probably be the first one or the second one that it finds. And it's going to get you right into the set access website. It's going to show you a preview of what an invoice looks like in QuickBooks. It will give you sort of a guide of what all those uh, codes mean. So you know exactly where you're going to import all that information. Let me go down here. So as you can see here, I'm on the set access website. And notice I have sort of a screenshot of an invoice and I have a whole bunch of red codes that tell me what each of those things mean. So if you are under using uh, the set access import software and you're trying to figure out how to do the mapping, you can use uh, that little cheat sheet there to let you know what every one of those things mean. Okay, that's actually pretty, pretty neat. Okay, so customer full reference name, that is going to be my customer name. And then currency, I don't need to deal with that because I'm not dealing with multiple currencies. Here where it says account reference number, I don't need to touch any of these. Transaction dates, yes, I do need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my transaction date here. And then invoice reference number, yeah, that's gonna be my number here. And you kind of get a data preview here on the side letting you know what is all the information that's coming through. Um, so if you got a billing address and that sort of thing, you can import that as well. So that's actually pretty, pretty neat there. I'm gonna scroll down some more into sort of the, the heart of this and you just kind of see, so we got terms, item and description, right? So somewhere here are the terms here, terms reference full name. So I'll pick terms and then we got, let's see, item description quantity. Okay, so let's look for the item. Somewhere down here, you're gonna see item. And it's a lot of fields, right? So you're gonna to have to go through it and see until you find the item. Item name, there it is, item reference full name. So I'll pick the item. And then the transaction ID, line ID, I don't need any of these things. Description, yes, I do need that. So I'll pick description. And then it says rate. Okay, so I do have that rate. And there's my quantity. I'm not using classes for this particular, but I can import them too. I'll put quantity and then amount. That would be my total amount here. Perfect. Okay, that actually should do it. Let, let me just go ahead and save this. And okay, so now that we have everything mapped, you will now get the same preview of the data, but you're going to see the actual uh, QuickBooks mapping in the top. So you're going to just, you can double check that the mapping is correct. Again, as I mentioned earlier, if customer D is not in there, if your reference number is not in there, if your item is not in there, this is not going to work. So you, you got to have these things in your database already. Now here on the top right, before I import, there's a little option that says more options. And in here, it'll, it'll ask you whether or not you want uh, the default settings in the event that you want set access to actually create the items for you. So if the item is not there, we can actually tell, yeah, go ahead and create the item for me and make it a service. Uh, you know, hit this cost of goods sold, hit this item. That's if you want to sort of force create those items. But I would, I would never do that. I would just make sure, I would suggest you to make sure that those are already in QuickBooks. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. And I hope I get an error, that way I can kind of show you how the error system works and how you can troubleshoot the, the imports. So we'll give that a minute. All right, so there was no errors, <laughs> but that's good then. So now we have invoice for customer D and customer E. So let's go ahead and go into QuickBooks and let's go into our customer center. And then let's go look for customer D and then Let's go ahead and look for every invoice that's there. Double click on that. And there it is. There's an invoice with multiple line items. So that in a nutshell kind of lets you know what the process is, uh, whether or not you're using multiple line items or single line items. Again, in summary, if you're working with QuickBooks accountant or enterprise, you don't need a third party tool and you will be able to import single line items. If you want multiple line items, no matter what, uh, you're going to have to use a third party tool uh, for any version of QuickBooks you have. Or if you're working with QuickBooks Pro, Premiere, or online, you have to use a third party tool, whether it's a single line item or multiple line items. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully, this was helpful for you.